Welcome to Beyond the Frontline Podcast, where your hosts, U.S. Air Force veterans, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson will help you transition from the front line to the home front. Listen every other Wednesday as they will bring great conversations, resources, tips, and feel-good stories that will resonate and relate. Now, here's your hosts, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Frontline. We are one of these veteran podcasts underneath the Coming Home Well network of podcasts. And I am joined in studio, as always, by the one and only my dear friend, Miss Donna Hoffmeyer. Donna, what's going on? Lordy, hello, hello. This is Jay. I just, I was just joking before we came on that we meet now on Zoom. Our lives are so sad. <laughs> <laughs> that we don't even meet in person anymore. Jay and I, like years ago, now we can say it years ago. That's true. We used we to, when we had a life or maybe no life, I don't know, whichever way you want to look at it. We used to sit out at the our favorite lunch place at the Rue de Fork. If yeah. you haven't been in Cibolo, you should go. There's yeah, a plug. Downtown Cibolo, Rue de Fork. No kickback. Good. Yep. Good place. And we would sit on the porch for like, because they have this awesome porch for like two hours and have lunch. And now we meet on Zoom. Well, you know, well, I'll make an excuse real quick. I mean, part of it's m more me than you probably, but we're not meeting at the Rooted Fork right now because it's below 50 degrees. And I'm oh, a that's fair true. Right? It, <laughs> when it drops below 50 or maybe 40 here in the central Texas area, I'm thinking to myself, how much, how much further south do I have to move exactly? I mean, Mexico's I cannot Mexico's calling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that could happen in my future. The islands are called, wait, what's the islands right off of the Galveston area? Wait, uh, going. Yeah. I don't, Bahamas, Jamaica, I don't know. Where... I don't know either. I Like, I have no navigation skills at all. The last person, <laughs> I follow the blue line on the GPS. That's all I do. I, I wouldn't mind ending up in Belize and doing a little snorkeling and scuba diving with whale sharks. That, that actually appeals to me a lot. And I would love to actually scuba <laughs> dive with a great white. As long as they could promise me I'm in a cage that can't be penetrated because I just saw a video on the news like two days ago of a young boy in the, I don't know, Bahamas or somewhere. It was called Walking with Sharks. So they do something to weight you down. He's on the bottom and he got bit and they showed the video and I was thinking, mm, if that was a great white, that would be a bad outcome for me. So I got to figure this out, Donna. It'd be like half a person if that was a great white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, that's, 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 and well, there's a whole lot of me though. Our listeners can't see me. That's a good thing because I've been, I've been slacking on my exercise and, and I have a, uh, insatiable love for food and, and beverage of choice. Well, I, I would say that. Policy. Char Sherry was keeping you in line and then y'all started those barbecue cook-offs and yeah, think... that's true we did we we did the San Antonio rodeo barbecue cook-off last weekend and in fact this so this day last week I was up at 345 to go I out saw. on the cowboy breakfast and I thought who signed me up for this <laughs> <laughs> that would be one Sherry and one Delisa. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah sure. How about you, Donna, real quick before we jump into a really exciting episode with a, mm -hmm. our guest today? What's going on in your world? Children, they're everywhere. I've got <laughs> one that finished basketball, one one that finished powerlifting. Both of them are starting track and field. And, and of theater. Course, theater was oh, in. Yes. I have to shout out to my daughter because. This is her. So she has been in um, drama club for two years. The first year she had a, uh, they call the ensemble. So there's no speaking. I mean, there is, but it's, she has no name, right? She might say a couple of words, but there's no actual role. She's just part of the group of people that are hiding, hanging, hanging out in the background. And this year she had a speaking role. They did Midsummer's Night Dream and she was Puck. And um. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. She was not Puck. That was another girl. She was um, Bottom. Okay. She was the donkey, right? <laughs> and yeah. And so she had her first speaking role. That's cool. And the, they had two competitions. And the first one, she won honorable mention for all-star cast. And then nice. she came home and she's like, I've got a couple things I need to work on. Did you record that? I said, I recorded some. And she's like, I need to slow down my talking. I need to do this. Oh, and did you see that death scene, mom? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I improv that. And she always like, you should keep that because everybody <laughs> laughed, right? 
And then uh, she did it again, like mm, three days later, four days later, and she won All Star cast I, member. So, that's what I saw you post, and I thought that was very, very cool. So yeah, shout out to my daughter Bianca. She's a rock star, and, and drama suits her. Not only because she's twelve, but because she is very animated. <laughs> Yeah, teenage drama is, is uh, tough to put up with. But drama is in acting and being on stage. What a beautiful thing. She's See, she's going to thrive. I tell her, this is what I tell her. I said, you should never change who you are. I said, but you have to know where the volume button is. Uh, so I said, sometimes you need to turn it way down in the environment you're in for whatever reason. And other times you, need, you can turn it up to medium or way up high. I said, when you're on stage, Put the amplifier in, turn it up high. Let's go. Like, <laughs> let it all out. Yeah. That, That's yeah. good advice. That's good sage advice from mom. There you go. That's what five decades has gotten me. <laughs> <My list. laughs> all right, enough about me. Let's talk about our guest because I got to tell you the story. I'm excited, yeah. So, you know, years ago when you were like getting me into all these different projects, you started yeah. this Better and Breakfast, right? And then you went off and did bigger and better things. And, and I continued this better and breakfast on and it has morphed over the years and whatnot. Great. Yeah. And, and so people like now, you know, shout out to Ruth. She knows who she is. So she goes, finds people and goes, Donna, do you know this place? And I'm like, no. And then she <laughs> finds me a name and like, I, I find people all the time because of her. That's and awesome. so sure enough, she says, do you know about Eagle Rest Reserve? I said, I don't and so she throws me a name and he's on our podcast now because he came and spoke gave it it was about fly fishing and he's gonna tell a story but I will I tell hate you that I missed that yeah it was an amazing uh amazing presentation so much so just to tell you that numerous people went up and handed him cash for his nonprofit. boom right there like it like three four people in a row and I was like and and I can tell you, I have not seen that happen before in the two years. So that's nice. That's amazing. Yes. So a little bit background about Jeff, founder of Eagle Rest Reserve, which we'll talk about. He's worked with other places. He's uh, been involved. He's a chemist. He's a chemist with a personality. I say that all the time. Nice. Yes. Um, <laughs> but he's he has a chemist. He worked in pharmaceuticals. He's been around. He's done a lot of stuff. And now he has this nonprofit um, that he has that he brings people out on Lake Whitney um, with this gentleman called Bill Adam, Bill Adams, and they come out together and they bring people on fly fishing uh, excursions. But there's a lot more to it, so I'm going to let him talk about that. So, without further ado, sir, welcome, Jeff. How are you? Well, I'm excellent. First of all, thank you so much for that. That generous introduction, wow, you know, a chemist with personality. Who knew that existed, right? That's your next uh, book. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to thank you for, for having me on and uh, for just a chance to tell people uh, a little bit about what we do and uh, and and how we do it. Um, gosh, where do you, where do you well, even start? I think we should yeah. start, uh, I think we should start how you, just briefly, how you wove yourself from you know, uh, for lack of better terms, or a little nerdy environment in chemistry where everybody just kind of stays holed up doing their thing, right? We, I worked, I was in healthcare. I know a lot of nerdy people and, and a lot of them are very content to be in that own world, right? And so here you are apparently not content just to stay in there and how you <laughs> weaved your way through different things and how you ended up with the nonprofit. Uh, gosh, well, let me, let me just start first with, um, uh, uh, in my in my nerdy world, I had a good nerdy buddy who was uh, uh, an avid fly fisherman, uh, like I was, as, as well as a bird hunter. And we uh, we spent many an hour out in uh, out in the field, uh, as well as work. So we worked together uh, at a, at a medical facility, a medical manufacturing facility, uh, and that's where the chemistry comes in. Uh, so he. We worked for, together for several years, and then he got sent out to uh, Washington, D.C., and about six months later, I see this uh, Facebook post where he's been granted the Volunteer of the Year Award for uh, this 
uh, entity that does fly fishing for veterans. And it's like, how many times have we been fly fishing? You know, and, and now you're just now telling me, what is this organization? <laughs> and how do I get involved in fly fishing with with and uh, with a a nonprofit man? This is this is this is down my pathway. I'm I'm all about this. So uh, uh, my buddy Hank uh, says, well, you know, we got one of uh, you can start one of these chapters there in Fort Worth, and uh, it wasn't long before I became a project lead and in, in this organization. Um, things rocked along pretty good until uh, the world of COVID which kind of changed everybody's world. And uh, uh, at the time, this organization worked uh, only for, uh, only with disabled veterans. And um, uh, with the disabled veterans, the, the, the thing I got told as an organization uh, is uh, you can't have anything to do with your, your disabled veterans. And uh, if, if you know anything about veterans at all, the last thing, especially those with PTSD, the last thing in the world you want for them to do is isolate. And I'm being told to isolate. It's like, no can do, Ghost Rider. <laughs> Got to do something different there. So uh, uh, started with another organization that uh, eventually got me to uh, uh, to where uh, my folks uh, around me were saying, you know, you just need to do this yourself. So uh, January, a year ago, we started uh, started after being with these other organizations for about a total of eight years, uh, set up this uh, nonprofit and uh, we bought some lake property uh, just out uh, on Lake Whitney and uh, basically kind of built us an operation, a center of operation there where we could take our RVs, uh, bring people in. We built a, a little cabin there. Um, and uh, before we go any farther, when I say a little cabin, uh, a lot of people have in their heads this idea of, oh, one of those. No, this is a wife approved, very nice, like a hotel room fishing cabin. Uh, so uh, uh, nice place for our, our, our veterans to, to come and stay. And uh, uh, we, we, we have our RVs there. and We jump in the boat and, and uh, head out to the lake to uh, fly fish for, for, for striped bass. Um, Getting involved in this has been uh, probably the uh, some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen, but it's it's also been some of the the most um, I don't have a better word except the most healing stuff uh, I've ever seen, and that that was a complete surprise to me from you know my first introduction to hey let's take some guys fly fishing to wow there's some there's some different stuff that I was not prepared for so. Anyway, that's the introduction to, to how I got started. We, uh, our group, uh, our, one of the other things that I did with, uh, with starting my own uh, organization was we made our loop a little bigger. So rather than just uh, disabled veterans, which we absolutely love and care for, uh, we opened it to uh, all veterans, first responders, uh, medical people, uh, basically any kind of public service. So our, the idea is how, not how we exclude people it's how do i include people um and if you don't fit in that realm uh you're called a volunteer so that's so we uh we try and catch everybody if you Jeff, volunteer. i love every bit of it you you had me at fly fishing number one but i'm just gonna own uh, i'm gonna <laughs> own a um i don't a, a block i had mentally like i don't know why but I, I've always thought of fly fishing in regards to like river trout and walleye, musky, you know, those kinds of things. And you said, man, we're out there doing it for striped bass. And I thought, where the heck have I been all my <laughs> life? Right. So, and you can bring your, you can bring your camper up. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. You got a place for your RV, pull it in, uh, water sewer, uh, electricity hookup, 50 amp, 30 amp, so right there. That's amazing. Well, I, we do love to do that. Donna and her family do as well. So, you know, we may have to take you up on that at some point. Come on. Jeff, let me let me tie back to something you said, though. You you said you actually, after you started doing this, it wasn't just about the recreating. You started to really be impacted by the healing. 
that was going yeah. on. Can you share a little bit for our audience about that? Like, what have you seen and how, how not only is it healing those participating in this with you, how about you? What's it doing for you? Oh, gosh. Well, let me start. Let me start with your first question. What have I seen? Okay. Um, within seconds, um, as soon as, and, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of stay first with, uh, with PTSD uh, sufferers. Uh, within seconds of them getting aboard the boat, you'll physically start to see a change. Mm. And uh, we, uh, uh, Bill Adams and I kind of, kind of always laugh about it. It's like, who you are on the boat, well, that's who you really are. You know, you can, when you get off the boat, you're going to be something different, but who you are on the boat, that's who you really are. And for a PTSD sufferer to get back to who they really are, what a powerful thing. So this uh, PTSD is, is kind of this negative cycle thing that happen. And when you watch that cycle physically and mentally being broken right there in front of you, it's, uh, it's powerful. And you see all the negativity come off. You see them start to laugh and get up and carry on. And then, oh, God, when you catch a fish, oh, man, <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, you know, that it's, it, it just takes them into a, a completely different realm, which uh, I want to say right here, because one of the things I missed was one of the other reasons we, we started our own nonprofit is for this very reason. It broke my heart that I was the only one who saw this. And it's like, if this guy's wife could see that, if his kids could see that, if they could get this glimmer of hope of, hey, there's the guy I used to know. And, and I've actually had kids on my boat go, who's that guy? I, I, I know who I came with. I don't recognize this guy. Who, who are you and what have you done with my dad? When we kind of when we can get people into that kind of place, man, that's um, that just uh, that just cooks my potatoes, man. That just makes. Step, that. I don't want to step on your thought, Jeff, but I'm just going to tell the audience right now that viscerally gave me a chill, like a positive way, like it that impacted me hearing you say that for for someone to experience that kind of change with a a loved one or a parent. That's amazing. Well, that's, uh, that's what we're about. Uh, yes. First of all, yeah, I love fly fishing. You know, you had like you had, you had had me at fly fishing. Cool. Yes. I want to say thank you to our veterans, to our disabled veterans, to our first responders, uh, taking them fishing. That's an easy way to do that. But if I can bring their, their family, just a little bit of healing, if I can give their PTSD, just a little bit of rest, or their physical pain, a little bit of rest, or their mental pain, if I can step them out of that world for a couple of hours to give them some some peace and some hope, man, that's that's uh, that's what I'm all about. So when Jeff gave this presentation, um, it got into these are the things that he's literally seen happen, right? And so we, him and I were having a, a kind of a chuckle when we were pre-meeting that sometimes, you know, the anecdotal stuff comes before the evidence-based, right? Yeah, true. And sometimes it's just because it's either not researched, not researched well, you know, they, they don't find the evidence, you know, whatever it may be. So Jeff, if you would kind of tell them what you saw with, with uh, Parkinson's patients. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and when, when she says Parkinson's patients, uh, I actually just got back from uh, November from actually going to a Parkinson's uh, therapy clinic to, to teach some of this uh, because it's so effective. Uh, the first time I saw, uh, saw this with an actual Parkinson's uh, patient, uh, we, were, we were tying flies at the VA. And uh, when we were, were there, this couple uh, I saw them getting out of the uh, uh, car in, in the parking lot and uh, uh, the gentleman could stand on his own, but he couldn't physically walk. 
on his own. Uh, his wife would actually move his legs to get him in the door uh, to uh, and where where we were was just in, inside the door uh, having our tie flying clinic there uh, in the in the hallway uh, in the entryway. And uh, this guy sat down and uh, and I'll tell you, man, this lady was mad, 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 mad that uh, some some of the medical folks there at the uh, clinic said, you need to take your husband to this uh, to this deal. This is this is important. You need to take him. And she didn't want to go. I mean, it, it was obvious. Oh, she had, you know, don't know why we're doing this stupid thing, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we promptly ignored her, uh, sat him down and started him on uh, on tying his first fly. And, you know, we've seen this kind of thing happen before, so I know what to do. I pull out my phone and hit my timer button and uh, just let the clock, uh, let the stopwatch roll. And uh, three minutes, 38 seconds into this gentleman tying his first fly, he leans back in his chair and he goes, huh. I'm not tremoring anymore. Now his wife's about three yards behind him and she goes into full freak out mode. Uh, her knees start to buckle. I thought she was going to pass out. Uh, you know, her, uh, her, her, her chin starts quivering a little bit, her mouth's hanging open. And she, what, 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 what did you do? What did you do to him? What lady, we're just tying flies. You know, <laughs> that's, that's all we're doing here. We're just, we're just tying flies. But she was in full freak out mode because for the first time in a long time, this man wasn't tremoring anymore. And she couldn't figure out why. Jeff, is it is that I assume you're about to tell us uh, the question weighing on my mind right now is what is it about that act? Is it the the mental focus, the attention to detail, the intricacy of how small the item is you're working with? Or what is this? Here here is what we found and 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 this is what i find uh we'll just keep it anecdotally <laughs> this is what we I, see all I love the time the, i love the Not joke medical I, was, I was educated in oklahoma so i always yeah. tell people speak slow to me speak yeah, slow yep. to small words <laughs> there, you go. there you go no offense to others from oklahoma by the way that's just me self <laughs> here's what we found um and and here's what i've uh found in and some of my research and, and talking with uh, medical professionals, uh, mental health professionals, uh, basically the, the, the brain's divided into two half, left half, right half. There's a line right down the middle. Yep. Uh, when you poke yourself in the finger with a, with, a, with a needle and go, ouch, that's the left part of your brain talking. Now, doctor, doctors will use all kinds of fancy words, abla uh, blue digging being gotta and... <laughs> Uh, they'll they'll just use all it simple left and right. Just for left and right. I can un I can understand left and right. So yeah, I'm, basically, I'm still with you. I'm still with you. <laughs> okay. So uh, when you do two things, when you do something that requires a hand eye coordination and a little bit of creativity, the brain switches from the left side to the right side. You've seen this all your life. Yeah, you, you watch you watch a football game, right? Two two teams out there pounding the snot out of each other. Two and a half out, out, uh, hours. Nobody's got to go to the bathroom. Nobody's hungry. Nobody's thirsty. And then they come in. Coach, I think I broke my collarbone. Why didn't you know that out on the field? Because your your left side that feels pain that was shut off. That was that was diminished. Those pain receptors are you know brain does one thing. You know one thing. Left brain or right brain? Which one are we in today? So when we do something that requires a hand-eye coordination, something that requires a, a touch of, of creativity, like tying a fly or fly casting, uh, you know, something along that line, it makes that brain switch to the right side and work. And then when it comes back to the left side, it's almost like an eraser on a board. Whatever was going on beforehand is just not remembered anymore. It's 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 gone. So uh, what we watch happen is somebody with Parkinson's or PTSD when they when they're in that mode when they're in that left brain mode and they're uh, you know 
in pain, in uh, physical pain or emotional pain. And then they do something, hand-eye coordination, little creativity, the switch happens, then those things are just shut off. Yeah. Now, for the PTSD guys, when they go back into that, it's like the fresh start and they'll go, you know, that was some stupid thinking that I was, I had on my head. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it was, you don't, you don't need to go down that dark road. Yeah. Kick yourself it's, out of it. You know, yeah. So, um, how, how simple is this? It is so simple. Um, I, I, I relayed the story that uh, I've got a, uh, I've got one of my, uh, we call them Eagles. Uh, I got one of my Eagles that uh, has a service dog and uh, nobody taught the dog to do this. But when the dog picks up PTSD, negative cycle of uh, empathy thoughts from his, from his master, he goes and gets the fly rod and brings it to him and say, and, and sits there like, uh, uh, it's time for you to go fishing because I'm I'm seeing this I'm seeing this stuff okay. here. So even the dogs have figured it out. You know? <laughs> and you know, now. Jeff and I are joking about you know I, if there's medical people listening, yes, there's a lot more science behind it and there's a lot more detail and all that. We're just talking very generally the right left side of the brain and what's happening. You know, very simple terms, and and so yes, I'm sure somebody could get into the you know lizard brain and medulla obligata and every other kind of part of it but for the simplicity of it you're you're basically unlocking another part of your brain and distracting yourself is what you're doing and and when you engage another part and disengage that part that was causing the emotional response or causing the tremors or whatever you get it to stop you know for that time and and so here we are with people that have tremors and Parkinson's and uh, with Parkinson's and now they're tying fly, fly ties. Like they never thought that they could do that because they're shaking. How can I get it through a tiny thing? And he's watching it happen. So, you know, why would, why would anybody make this up? He literally is anecdotally watching people with Parkinson's that have tremors, like fly making fly ties. Yeah. Mike, my question real quick, Jeff, I know sure. you, you want to share something here is earlier you used the word uh, broken the cycle there. You're breaking the cycle. Can I maybe ask a, a question that I'm just curious, curious about? It's not breaking whether or not PTSD or some other thing like Parkinson's is there. It's still there. Is it, yes. is it fair to say what we're doing is interrupting? uh right. is that the same Absolutely. premise okay yeah interrupting uh, especially that cycle. for yeah, mm -hmm. yeah especially for ptsd because ptsd is a negative cycle that happens I got you. okay uh, something bad happens and triggers it so now i'm thinking about it and now i'm getting more mad about it the more mad i get about it the more i'm thinking about it and the more i'm thinking about it the more bad i get so it's this mm -hmm. it's the and and every minute that goes by the anger gets little worse I got you. It, it's a little deeper so finally it it you know what'll happen is somebody will act out they'll beat the wall they'll drive their car into a, uh, into a brick wall you know so there'll there'll be an action that actually comes out of that negative cycle but if you hey dog go bring me my fishing rod we'll break this thing we'll, we'll take a little break yeah. that's awesome yeah yeah, that's amazing to me, Jeff. I love I love what you are doing. I love how you're even now being sought after because you you just got through sharing that you were brought into a, a hospital. I think you well, said. it's a, a therapy clinic. Okay, uh, therapy our... clinic to, oh. to show them some yep. of the things. That's amazing to me. Now, I do want to pass along. Uh, we're uh, we're very much uh, we're, we are a five hundred one c three. So yes. Uh, what I want to do is I want to teach people how to tie flies. And yes, I want to teach people how to fly fish. But right alongside of that, um, here's a fly tying kit. Here's a fly rod. I'm going to give that to you wow. to give you the tools to go do what you can do to help yourself. You, That's important. I agree. I'm not the therapist. But I can teach, I can teach anybody to fly fish in 20 minutes. You'll spend the rest of your life learning now. But yeah, 
I'll give you the tools. Here, here's a fly rod. Go. Here's a tying kit. Go. Come on back when you want to, and and we'll we'll go fishing. We'll go fly. We'll tie some flies. We'll see some new patterns and and do some new stuff. But you don't need me to do this. I love that. In order to to help yourself, you know. Right. How do you uh, do? You have uh supporters or sponsors that help you with the fishing rods and the or is that out of pocket or uh at first it was out of pocket uh we have uh we have some private donors uh that uh that have been helping us out uh this last year uh uh i'm, I'm gonna put in a selfless plug here uh my company cae uh uh put in uh they gave me an award of uh seventy five hundred dollars for being the volunteer of the year so that's uh that's a big chunk for us yeah. <laughs> that's uh that's a lot of uh, that bought a lot of fly rods and a lot of tying kits uh that's no true. joke there uh paid for a lot of gasoline so mm -hmm. um uh but for the most part uh we are we are self-funded uh private donations uh oh. just grassroots yeah and you can go on his website and donate just in case you were wondering. We'll have that up in the summary. <laughs> yeah, Donna Donna does a great job, Jeff, about putting a summary out there that ties them back to any links you have to your business, your contact info. So, yeah, I'll just reiterate right now to listeners, if you're listening to this uh, and, and are being impacted like I personally am, man, what a, a great opportunity for you to engage, not only as a participant, participant. Uh, possibly if if you have some of these things we're talking about but maybe as a volunteer and and at the very least mm -hmm. right all gave some some gave all uh if all of us just did a little bit and made a donation to this worthwhile company that's making a difference in people's lives this non nonprofit, i should say is uh would be impactful. Jeff, I just want to own one more thing. Earlier I owned I had this mental block and thought too small. So uh years ago like to early 2000s uh 2003 time frame maybe i was the commandant of cadets at auburn university shout out to debt five anybody listening to this and uh because i was on staff they they said to the staff hey you can you can take a couple free courses a semester while you're here and one of them was fly fishing and i had every... that's a course it's a course yeah, yeah. at a I... college yeah, I had every, I get my major there. <laughs> I had every intention, Jeff. Of I had three years, and I ended up rolling out of there and never going through it. So, to say that I know how to fly fish today would not be truthful. What I do is fly drift, right? I, <laughs> I, I put it in the water, let the current take it, and hopefully something bites. If not, I reel it in and I start over again. So I got a lot to learn. I heard you say twenty minutes. You can you can teach me the skills. How many times have you been whipped by a, I mean, when I was a kid, I I grew up fishing. My dad took us fishing. And do you know how many times he lost his hat because of me when I was casting? I took his hat off numerous times. <laughs> he wore his hat just for protection. I still exactly. Do still do it. Yep. Still do it. Uh, we, uh, we, are, we wear hat, glasses uh, for just Body for armor. But yeah, yeah, yes, uh, whatever we need. Uh, but, <laughs> Uh, but we also uh, part of what we teach is here, here's here's the fly fishing safety. Here's how to uh, you know, one of the things that we do is we we fish from the boat, and everybody's like, "How in the world do you fly fish from a boat? How big is the boat? People or three people or dare I say four people? How do you how do you do that? And it's like, well, it's real simple. The one on the, the people on the front of the boat and on the back of the boat." You can only cast ninety at a ninety degree angle. So you stand at the front of the boat and cast to one side or the other, all good. And if if Bill Adams ever sees a fly crumb across the middle of the boat, somebody's <laughs> going to get a chewing out. I'm just. <laughs> but how big is the boat? Oh, it's nice. It's uh, I believe that's a twenty eight foot. You can go on our website and see some pictures. Wow. But it's it, it's decked out. I mean. Bill did a marvelous job of of making sure that he had a boat that's that's primo set up for fly fishing and that's awesome. uh, get gets out on the water 250 horse motor. I mean it'll it'll put you where you need to go real quick. So that's awesome. And they're smart too. So when they do this, they do it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, yeah, uh, when, whenever there's a lot of traffic out on, on Lake Whitney, uh, I'll just tell you flat out, all the fish go deep and ignore all the traffic on top. And long about Monday evening, Tuesday morning, they start getting hungry again and start surfacing to the top uh, and and make them easy for us to see and and, and go run after. And uh, one of our favorite things to do, my favorite personal thing to do is uh, we we chase seagulls. Uh, uh, With a fishing rod? Well, what they do, what happens <laughs> is that the the uh, the the striper feed uh in a in a school and they push all the bait fish to the top and the seagulls are up there watching uh, they'll be they'll be 30 40 50 100 seagulls diving down on these bait fish that the striper are pushing up so there'll be this monstrous activity of, of, of blow-ups on the lake and then the striper will slash through them and and splash on the water and it's uh it's uh it's a crazy sight to see. I I, I just love it. So. <laughs> how, how many times, like how many fish on average do they catch? Does everybody usually catch a fish or? Um, the times that people usually don't catch a single fish is what I would call rare. Uh, Let me get up there. <laughs> uh, about 90% of the time uh, we'll have, uh, we'll have a, everybody on the boat catch their limit of five each wow you just let me up there i'll have everybody naked and uh <laughs> because i like ripped the clothes off by accident and no fish so it'll be me. there's a visual everybody right there <laughs> donna casting and removing people's clothes Moving clothes right oh, Lord. Fly. <laughs> jeff that's pretty fun i know striped bass are not small no. uh, are not small mm. fish they're big so what's Those the average are... weight What's the smallest uh, for limits? Well, uh, they have to be at least 18 inches long to keep them. Uh, most of what we're catching is 20, 22, 24, 26 inch uh, fish. That's so decent. You know, a decent sized fish. Uh, we always laugh about it. Uh, one fillet, just one side of one of these fish is generally enough for two people. Yeah. Uh, they're big. They're big. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a, uh, it's a fun trip. Uh, do you bring that? Do you bring that back to the cat? Well, see, then there's more, Jay. You got to get the rest of us, right? Okay, so I'm ready. You get to go break. out in the boat, and then you you get to you know do your fly fish and catch limit, and then when you go back, like you get to stay overnight, right? So either you're in your camper or you're staying in the wife approved cabin, whichever. <laughs> right. And <laughs> and then Jeff comes in, and if that's not all enough, he goes and cooks you dinner. So Absolutely. do you use the, is that the, the bass or what do you, we, are we eating pasta and weed? I, yeah, I, I like <laughs> sending the bass home with folks. Uh, my specialty uh, and, and most requested dish is shepherd's pie. Ooh, uh, I grew cobbler. up with that. Yeah, oh. so shepherd's pie and a peach cobbler. And, you know, that's, that's living large in my world. So, uh, oh. well, you, you certainly had me at cobbler. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's all the way up there for that so jeff the fly the 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 tying of the flies i want to get back to that this um sure. this is a complex thing right it's not it's you're not just getting a hook and slinging some thread around it i mean there's, there's, there's an art. art there's kind yeah. of an art to this yeah uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what to tell everybody else uh, when it comes to flying ties, it ain't rocket science. They were using fly fishing long before they were making rockets. So it's uh, it's so stinking simple. It's not funny, and that's the truth of it. Because wow. all you're doing is wrapping a thread around a hook. Mm. You're sticking some hair in there. You're sticking some feathers in there. Now there's some things about proportion. Uh, you know, getting uh, getting the right proportion, but you can measure all that with a uh, a six inch ruler, and uh, and that's what we're there to show you how. You know, make it, make it look pretty. Um, but the God's truth of it is, the ugliest, ugliest, ugliest fly will catch the most fish. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, we 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 laugh at some of the the fly tires, the the really good guys or professionals, because they'll ask you. Uh, do you want a pretty fly or you want a fly you can fish with? Because oh. those are not the same thing. 
Oh, that needs to be a tagline. You need that on a t-shirt. Yeah. (laughs) Well, one's designed to catch fish and one's designed to catch fishermen, you know, so and one's decided it's pretty versus what, uh, what works. Um, And it's, you know, it's uh, uh, the flies we use are made from chicken feathers and deer hair, Uh, some lead eyes. That's uh, uh, well, I don't know that you helped me feel any better, Jeff. I, I was not graced with looks, and it hasn't served me where it just attracts a lot. So <laughs> it's good to hear that fish are attracted to ugly flies. It's, uh, I'm telling you. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Now what are you saying to Sherry, that she has crap taste? Like, we oh, to see, this. I better not let her listen to this. I, was like, Sherry, I, I got your back, Sherry. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, don't listen. Well, you know but, I like to Here's it. what's cool, too, because... Remember this population, right? We we are all maturing and body parts are failing us like our eyes and stuff. So those are small hooks. And when he's trying to show you, you'd all have to be in his lap trying to see it. So he knew that. And so what did you do, Jeff, to overcome that? Yeah, uh, I, I made a big version of all the little stuff. So, uh, you know, generally the hooks that, that we tie with, uh, you know, they might be anywhere from a quarter of an inch long to half an inch long. Well, the hook that I use to show you this is like 14 inches long and about eight inches wide. Um, We're tarping. The feathers feathers that I tie on are like the tail feather uh, of an ostrich, you know? (laughs) I mean, you can see this one. It's, it's, that's neat. Probably so. different by the street, so. so these are training aids, enlarged training aids. Absolutely. To help them Absolutely. see what it is you're demonstrating. Yeah. Fly fishing, yeah. fly tying for AARP. Right. <laughs> I just joined. Don't uh, don't pick on me. I just joined. No. Uh, you want to hear a sad story? What's that? 40, when, when I was 48, they started sending me AARP stuff. I was well, like, getting you ready. Oh. <laughs> so That's they were, wrong. They were, they were getting you ready, Donna. I mean, they hey, work, Jeff, but so, I don't get it now. Jeff, you or Donna one, I think at the onset of this said something a a, a little thing about a book. What what do you got cooking? Uh, well, yeah, uh, she Donna has inspired me. Uh, I've had I've had since I've been doing these presentations, uh, numerous people come up to me and say, "Hey, I I I need to read more about this," uh, and you know like 20 times in the, in the, the last 45 days, people have said, I need you to, to, to get me some information on this. So uh, Donna in her, uh, one of many businesses that she's uh, a master of has, uh, about um, that. has a, a, a coaching uh, deal where uh, she'll help me uh, set up and, and write, get my book written and I get it self published. So uh, people need to hear it. She's, yeah, she's so good at that part of it, Jeff. That, that's exciting to hear. Uh, so, do we have a time frame? Is there a, a gold marker out there when you're hoping to have this thing wrapped up and released, and or we just did, in the early? We stages? just set up today. Don't overwhelm uh, him early yet. Stage. Okay, <laughs> early gotta, right. I, had I didn't know if I should be looking. Right, I was ready. I had to delineate out where we were starting, so we just I, got the starting point. I got you. Okay. Yeah, she, she'll have to, you know, she's the expert in this. She'll have to tell me how long it takes, but well, uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, She's going to help you see it across the line, Jeff, because she is, right. so she will hunt you down and <laughs> make you stay on track, uh, give you accountability, <laughs> right? Um, but she's very good at what she does. Exactly. We'll find them. Yep. It's, it'll be fun. I think it's, this is a, this is a needed, I think it'll be very uh, beneficial to people on a lot of levels. And, yeah. and that it's such a neat thing to do something recreational and it be therapeutic. Like I got a kick out of it when he would say, you know, people are like, well, maybe my dad and, and uh, maybe my brother or whatever. And he's like, well, you can come up too. And he's like, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't know about, I don't want to take up space. And they're like, oh, you just come as a volunteer. What do I have to do? Fly fish. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. Volunteer jobs at, at my place are pretty tough. Uh, you have you have to go fly fishing and you have to have a good time. And you have to take pictures of people with uh, big, stupid fish with big, stupid grins on their faces. I love that, everything. 
that's a, uh, you know, there I'm you go. go volunteer. I was waiting for him to say, though, if you come up and volunteer, you get to do all those things he just said and then conclude with, and you may clean all the fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I did my uh, fair share of trout, don't worry, and bass. Well, uh, our our guy Bill, he has he has this lined out in a in a in an artful fashion that uh, he doesn't let anybody touch his knives, doesn't let anybody touch his fish. He'll hand you back a, a Ziploc a gallon Ziploc bag with all your fish. Ah, so uh, you're spoiled on top of that. You don't need to. Cotton. Oh yes, absolutely. That's uh, your phone's gonna start ringing after this. It like, is, it is. Hey. Get, get ready, get ready. Hey, uh, hey, Jeff. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Donna was alluding to putting all of your information out on the summary page. What's your greatest need as a, as a nonprofit and everything you're trying to do here to support others, first responders, veterans? What's your biggest? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I always tell people we need three things, and uh, and, and first we're uh, we're at mission, you know, we're we're about the mission. Uh, if you got somebody who needs to go fishing, I need the name, I need the telephone number. Uh, usually, when I when so, if you left this podcast and went and handed somebody my number, uh, I'm never going to hear from them. Mm. If you tell them, hey. I want to go fishing with you. I want to take you fishing. And then you call me as a volunteer and set it up. Uh, they'll come now because, it. It, you know, it, uh, here's a strange guy. I don't, is this a scam? And I get this more. Is this a scam? Are you, this is too crazy. This is, this can't be true. Anything oh. too, you know, this good can't be, can't be true. So, you know, it's Come interesting. It is interesting that you just made that statement about them doing it on their own. And it, and I'm going to tell the audience, you know, Jeff's not a veteran. Correct, nope. right? Did Correct. not serve, right? Oh. So it to me, it's even more interesting that you made that comment. If you just hand them the number, they're not going to call. But if you set it up and say you'll go with them and, and bring them, then they're apt to go. And that is a statement that I have said, Jay has said, we have seen this over and over that when people are like, look, there's this whole resource page. And I'm like, yes, that's great. And they go look at it. Now I want you to take somebody that's completely intact, feeling good about themselves. And they might go look and be like, oh, that looks interesting. And they may, may go check it out. Take that same person that pretty much had their, their back end handed to them and they come out of a career in the military and they might be dealing with PTSD or anxiety or depression and they're not in a good place. And you put that same list up in front of them and then you say, go get them. Look at all the resources for you. They're going to get overwhelmed and they're going to go, uh, thanks, I'll go take a nap. Yep. It's not what they're going to do. But if we turn around and say, hey, meet me at this event, I'm going to be there. And I see that out of a little experience. Jay did that to me. He'd be like, hey, I'm going to this. Why don't you come? And the only reason I showed up was because he was there. I didn't know anybody. And exactly. so it, it's a big deal. You know, that's a that's a pretty big deal that you can identify that and never have been a veteran, never been through that. So kudos to you for that. We've, we've seen a lot. So, you know, first thing we need are, are you know, bring people fishing second thing we need is you as a volunteer to go get them and bring them because a lot of them that's the only way that they're going to come and of course if you can't send me one if you can't come yourself then then send money you know <laughs> you gotta tell uh, them your story though there there's a hundred dollar story here you have to understand the yeah, story that's a cool story so uh i was taking some veterans uh, out on a uh, on a fly fishing uh weekend and uh, right before I went, I uh, stopped at uh, my local gas station and uh, uh, was putting gas in my truck. And uh, it, it filled up and clicked off. Click and right at click, it was five zero 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 fifty 50 bucks. And it's like, you know, I couldn't do that again if I tried. So go out, have a great weekend, come back in, gas tank is empty. So I'm getting ready for Monday morning, stop at the same gas station. And uh, lo and behold, clicked off five zero 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 
And it's like, it, it was kind of like a, a red light moment for me. You know, it costs you a hundred bucks to do this. If the people I know, if the people that, that care can send a hundred bucks, man, what a difference that that would make in taking care of uh, our veterans and first responders. Uh, a fly fishing setup uh, like we like we use is generally about a hundred bucks. The uh, fly tying kits that we give out are a hundred bucks, and a day on the water, hundred bucks in gas. So, uh, what we have is is uh, 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 for everybody that uh, uh, does that is I have a little poker chip that uh, it's basically thanks for getting your chip in the game. You know, uh, you you're you're fueling. The healing that uh, that can happen for uh, for those who've served us. So that that's really what we're about. I love it. Well, I'm going to get my chip in the game. I'm gonna I'm gonna certainly go out to your page, Jeff. I love art. I love what you all are doing. And uh, man, you educated me today. I I'm going to leave this podcast uh, informed and aware, and now in a better place to say to somebody, "Come along with me." And We'll get you fly fishing, Jay. I mean, <laughs> well, I look you, forward to that. That that part will be fun too. You, you know, you confess your sin that you had all this opportunity to go. <laughs> you know, well, oh I'll, yeah, you're on I'll, the hook I'll, now. I'm on the. I'm I'm glad you didn't disown me and just leave the podcast, Jeff. I'm glad <laughs> you stuck it out. It was tough. That, that's right. Now it's literal. You're on the hook. Pun I intended. Love I love it. <laughs> count, count, count me in. I mean. All right. Well, I think we've definitely talked all angles of this. And um, that's a that's a lot of personality and a lot of good things coming from a chemist. I think that's uh I think that's impressive. I tease them all the time about it. I just think I'm like, wow, you got such a big personality. <laughs> yes, yeah. Very warm, oh. genuine. Yeah, Jeff, mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. I, I'm so glad that Donna met you and arranged to have you on. It's really good to see you and to get to meet you and and uh, a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing your heart today. The only thing left to do here is bring your, bring your RVs, come in and hang out at the river and uh, come and hang out at the lake and we'll go do some fishing. I like it. We need to look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm liking like it. That yes. So. <laughs> <That's the idea. laughs> All right. <laughs> Any last quotes or thoughts there, Mr. J? Because no, look, say... I no, you know, I just kind of shared how impactful it was. I mm -hmm. hope that all of you listening had also found a lot of just pearls of wisdom and uh, were touched like we were. And so, you know, let's support Jeff. Let's support the cause, the nonprofit. And uh, man, hopefully some of you listeners will reach out to him as well and say, I'm in. And now, yeah, Donna, no, no quotes today, right? I, I have uh, I have a lot of them always. I'm speechless today. That tells you how much of an impact he made. Wow, that's impressive, Jeff. You made him wow. speechless. <laughs> but kudos to you. Dang. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So from all of us here beyond the front line, we are very thankful for our audience and all our listeners. And you know, the same thing we say, like, share, smash the button or whatever, all those cool little taglines that they're supposed to tell them that I always forget. <laughs> Just like us, engage, email us. We love to talk to people. Um, and you know, if you can't just share it and just, or just listen, we're happy for you to just listen. So from all of us here at Beyond the Frontline and our parent podcast coming home well, we want you to have a wonderful week. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Frontline, a podcast of coming home well. Join us every other Wednesday. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review.